In this video, I would like to describe how the column reinforcement tool works. And we're going to start with launching the tool. It's located here in Pro Concrete Tasks in E2. And when you launch it, you will see the first tab. Now we have to configure a few of those here. And we'll start from the first one, which is called Column Info. And here you'll see what attributes can be defined, like bar quantity for each face, this bar quantity is for that face and this bar quantity is for this face and you can see I have already assigned four bars and four bars for each and this is symmetrical right now but if I want to I can untick this box and I can specify an opposite quantity like six so right now I will have four bars here and six here and you can see it here in vertical reinforcing that on this side I have six placeholders and then this one I have four. But let's keep it simple right now. Okay, so apart from bar quantities, we can also set up clearances. So this is a clearance for that face and this clearance is for this face. And again, if you have unsymmetrical opposite values, you can also set Right here, I want to have a different cover or clearance and here as well. So when you do that, you can also set up top clearance and bottom clearance here. And finally, after you finish, you can just select which column you want to reinforce. And I've selected the one with this button. And here you can see already software recognized that long face has 600 dimension and short face has 300 dimension. So we'll put Okay, so let's go to vertical reinforcing. Here you'll see your preview of your column with all the placeholders I've shown you just a second ago. Now we have to define what bars we want to put in those placeholders. So I'm clicking here on the plus button and I can define a new bar, new type of bar. And I will call it A. And here I can define what size of the bar I want to use. So let's use, let's say 20 millimeters bars. I, here I can define if they were going to have an offset, top offset or bottom offset, and what end -on conditions like bend or hook, crank, whatever from this list. And right now I just specified the size of the bar. It's not in the model yet because I haven't decided where I want to place it. So to do that, I just have to click on any of those placeholders you see here. First one, and you can already see the bar is now being placed in the model. And I can go one by one and click, or I can use these icons to help me out. So if I want to put 20 millimeter bars in all of the corners, I will use this icon. And just like that, I have placed four bars in the corners. And if I want to put smaller bars in all the other ones, I have to create a new bar definition, and I will call it B. And here I will set smaller bar. And I will use this button, which is all of the bars apart from the corner bars. Like that, I have my vertical reinforcement. So if I want to have a top offset, so I want to have my bars sticking out, I just have to define a value here. And if I want I make those bars shorter on the bottom, I can also use one meter here. Or I can stick them out, so then I have to use a negative value, one meter, let's say. And here you can see they're sticking out right now. Okay, so that's vertical reinforcing. Now let's go to ties. That's what's missing here. So it works similarly. First, I have to define what type of stirrups I want to use. So I'm going to press a plus sign in this section. This is the zone data. So now let's go to ties. First of all, we have to define the zones we want to put the ties in. So that means zones have different spacing and different location. And we first have to define what type of spacing and where that zone is located, and then put the bar definition inside of those zones. So let's do that. To define the zone, I have to click here on this plus button. And I'm going to call my zone number one. Bar size is going to be eight millimeters and that zone is going to be from the top and with spacing of 150 millimeters 
it will start from 30 millimeters from the top and it will end on one and a half meter in. So you can see right now, I have just defined the zone. There is no tie here in the model yet. To define the geometry of the bar, I have to click here on the plus sign on the right hand side of the dialog window. Now I can give it a name. So let's give it a name that's going to be tie one. And now I can start defining geometry of that bar. So it will start here. I just have to click on the placeholders and it will create the legs of the bar. So here I clicked from this one to this one, then going down. And you can see it's already being modeled in that zone for me here and here. And now I can define an end condition. So let's say I want a 90 degree hook. And just like that, I'm finishing up my first tie in my first zone. Now, if I want to have the same ties in all of the zones I'm going to define, I just have to do it once and the software will replicate the same stir up for all the other zones. So let's do that. Let's do the bottom zone right now. To do that, I have to, again, use this plus sign and then define the label. It's going to be label number two and bar size. I will use the same, but you can use different. And this time I will use a bigger spacing, like 300. And in, uh, that's a bottom zone. And I'm, again, I'm going to start it from 30 millimeters from the start of the zone. Because it's bottom, right now it's being measured from the end of the column inside. Right? So the first one was 30 millimeters from the top, because that was a top zone. And this one is bottom zone, and it's measured from the bottom. So 30 millimeters from the bottom, it starts, and it will end one and a half meter in the same as the top one. So that's a bigger spacing, and it's on the bottom. So to finish this off, I just need to define the last one, and it's going to be a middle one. And middle one is very specific. It's because the start of the zone is measured from the top, and bottom of the zone is measured from the middle. So that is really handy when you stretch the column and you want to have those two zones on the bottom and top stay the same and just want to stretch out the middle one. So let's see how it works. That's the zone number three. I have the same bar size. Spacing is going to be one 200, let's say. And my zone is going to start from 1650. So that's 150 millimeters from the first one. And it will end from 1.8 meter because that's one and a half meter plus 300 millimeters from the last one. This way, I'm ensuring that this zo the zones are not overlapping. This is how you have to set it up. Okay, so we have our stirrups with end conditions. Now, if I want to have a different uh, set of stirrups or a different stirrup in one of those zones, I have to go inside on to the one that I want to edit. And here I have to define a new tie geometry. So I'm going to click here on the plus sign. And you see what's happening right now. Only the first zone has the definition. All the others I have to define one by one right now. Because it's not identical for all of them. I'm, I'm creating a new one for the middle one. So let's do that. I will create a, this type of stirrup. To share with the capabilities that we can also do that. Okay, so that's the stir up here. And I now have to also define the stir up in the last zone on the bottom. Okay, so this is how you work with it. This is how you set up different ties for different zones. If I extend my column, you have seen that if I stretch out this column, the reinforcement has adapted, right? It also is the same if I use a different size of the column. So here I'm going to clone this reinforcement to other columns right now. And you will see that reinforcement will adapt. So clone two is here. I'm just going to select another column and you can see it has different size and it's adapted, of course. And here another one. And again, 
it's the same number of bars, same number of stirrups, and I mean uh, the same zones for stirrups, etc. But I'm just uh, cloning and it's adapting to the size of the column. And again, if I would change that on the fly, like let's adapt that column again, double click on it and parametrically change the shape to have a 600 by 600 column. This is how it looks like. And again, reinforcement has adapted to that size with all the covers.